Father, it's so good to be in your house. Thank you, Lord, for what you've already done. Volumes could be written about what's taking place just at this altar tonight, God. Thank you, Lord, that you heal the broken. God, that you raise up those that are weary, God, that they shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not grow faint. They shall rise up on wings as eagles, God, because of your spirit and your grace. Tonight, Lord, as we open up your word, we pray that you open it up to us. Open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our hearts to have a good understanding. May we be the good ground where the word is sown. May it produce fruit in each and every one of our individual lives. Lord, we thank you, God, that your Holy Spirit is our teacher. He is our guide. Give us your vision, your wisdom, your direction, your instruction, even the correction we need for our lives, Lord. And we thank you for it. God, we don't just ask this blessing upon ourselves. Also, we'd ask it for all the churches, both here in the Inland Empire as well as around the planet, that are both preaching and hearing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, there are brothers and sisters. No time do we think of ourselves as any better than anybody else, but we see ourselves as co-laborers and workers together in your field, building your kingdom. So God, we would ask that you bless all the churches, bless the Baptists, Lutherans, Methodists, Episcopalians, Charismatics, Pentecostals. Thank you for Calvary Chapel and Harvest, for Oak Valley, for Ecclesia and Trinity and Emmanuel Baptist, for The Way, God. Thank you, Lord, for Sandals and, God, for all the great churches that are out there, Lord, for the assemblies and the four square denominations, God, Church of God in Christ, Crossroads, Lord, for our Catholic brothers and sisters and Adventist brothers and sisters. God, if they're preaching your gospel, declaring your name, Lord, we bless them as you would bless us. God, also, we don't forget our persecuted brothers and sisters scattered abroad throughout the world, Lord. We ask that you cover them, protect them, bless them, heal them, strengthen them, encourage them, deliver them, God, from prisons and bondages. Lord, deliver them from the hand of their enemies, God. May they endure to the end, to the glory of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we're all in agreement. We say? Amen. Oh, come on, give me a better amen than that. We all say? Amen. There you are. Not going to let you guys daydream tonight. It's going to be a good night. I had an experience with my family uh, recently. Every year we have kind of a tradition that we go out and we pick raspberries up in Oakland. There's a certain place that we go to every year. It's a really neat place. We always enjoy it. And uh, you can see we got Phil's behind me. But right here, um, I took a couple of pictures. And this is the place that we go. And uh, you can see my little girl over here on the left-hand side uh, in the red shirt with the thumbs up and the little raspberry thing there. And that's just all the, the raspberry bushes all the way up. She's right there in the middle of it. And um, you can't see the lines. But on the right-hand side over here, here's all three of my kids. And um, this is my little guy, Titus, in the orange shirt up front here, picking raspberries. And what you don't see is there is like hundreds of bees all up in there, okay? So you're going through that. And as well, what you don't see is that the raspberries, as you're, as you're picking them, they have little pricklies on the, on the stems and things like that. So you, oftentimes you get in there and you see, oh man, that one looks good. Ow! You know, and all of a sudden you're, you're sucking your finger or whatever like that. But anyways, the kids have a blast. We're always filling them up. And, and the kids are always amazed at how mom and dad go so fast. Like, how did you fill that up so fast? Well, we didn't eat half of them while we were picking, you know? So that's, that's part of the reason. Um, but uh, it was neat too, because this last time we took my nephew and my nephew is allergic to bee stings, okay? So we, we called his mom. We said, hey, we're going raspberry picking, and we, were, we, we had him. Now, now, Pastor Jim and Deborah, they would have taken him and watched him while we all went up with his little brother, but he would have missed out on the fun. And so we called his mom. We said, what do you think? We're going raspberry picking. We got the boys here, and do you think he should go? And she said, well, he knows himself, and he knows what he can handle, what he can't handle, and so ask him what he thinks. And we said, okay, because he doesn't have to pick. He could go up with us, hang out. There's benches off to the side. And, you know, he doesn't have to pick if he doesn't want to. He can just kind of sit on the sidelines. And so um, she said, well, just ask him. He, he probably would love to go. He'd probably love to sit on the benches at the very least and yell at you guys and, and you know, just have a good time that way. Um, and maybe he'll pick some on the fringe or something like that. We'll see. And so we said, all right, you know, so we asked him, we said, hey, bud, what do you want to do? And he said, no, I'll go with you guys and sit on the bench. We said, that's cool. So we made sure we grabbed the EpiPen, you know, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're, we're working not only with faith, but with wisdom. And so we grabbed that EpiPen in case we needed to, I, I hate the thought of that. Don't you hate the thought of that? It just gives me the willies, like the hair stands, uh, you know, I'm thinking about a big old fat needle going into somebody's leg and then you got to hold it there for 10 seconds. Oh my gosh. Anybody do that? You did that, Bob? You're amazing. To yourself or to someone else? Oh, yeah. It's easier with someone else, huh? I wouldn't be able to do that to myself. Ah, you know, it'd be like a movie or something like that, pulling the bullet out of your arm. I'm on a rabbit trail. Okay, so, 
So anyways, he goes with us, and what was so neat for me was just watching this little guy sitting out there on the sidelines, and, you know, I'm, I'm picking raspberries with the kids, telling them, okay, find this type, you know, the dark ones are sweeter, and, you know, if they're not pulling off easy, just leave them go, because, you know, they're going to be hard, and you don't want that. You want the nice, juicy ones, you know, and so we're, 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 we're learning, and the kids are just having fun, and every now and then I'm looking over to see my little nephew over there on the bench. Well, one time I look over, the kid's gone. Now, this doesn't surprise me because my nephews have been known to just disappear. We, one time we lost the older one at Disneyland for like 15 minutes, and we were about ready to strangle him when we found him because we found out he just wandered. You know, it was like, oh, look at that. And he was just gone, you know. So I'm thinking that happened. So I'm thinking, well, he couldn't have gone too far, you know. Um, it's a long hike home. And, uh, and so, you know, he's got to be around here somewhere. And so I started asking the other kids, hey, did you see where he went? Did you see where he went? Did you see where he went? And finally he said, oh, he's over there with Mommy. And I look, and I'm not playing, in the middle, like, okay, so you see where, where, where my little girl is over here? He was like in the thick, like that, picking berries. And I'm like, hey, you know, and he looks up, and I said, yeah, you know, like, you did it. Don't get stung, because I don't want to, you know, but you're there. And I mean, he had so much fun. He, 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 was, uh, he was praying in tongues most of the time, you know. Anytime a bee would come by, it was shatala basanda. You know, he's just like, not, not doing that. You know, we're, we're going to go do something else. So anyway, no, he, he, he literally prayed and was like, oh, in Jesus' name, you know. And anytime a bee would come around, he just kind of, and by the end of it, you know, he, he had no fear. He was having so much fun. In fact, he was, he was filling them up. And, and then the kid is so picky. He eats like hot dogs, chicken nuggets, and that's about it. Yeah. So, but by the end of it, he was eating berries like crazy. He says, I'm so happy because I didn't even know I liked these. And we said, well, if you would try stuff, kid, you know. Sometimes that's all you got to do to get him to try something is to get involved in it. So we were so happy and we were so proud. And it's so funny because every night I go home and I, I journal my thoughts about the day and sometimes God brings certain things out. And while I was meditating on what happened, I, I just got this message that I'm going to deliver you tonight. And it's called Working for a Greater Harvest. Working for a Greater Harvest. There's just a couple of things that I want to draw out of that experience tonight. And, and as we go through, we'll draw out of the Word of God because, listen, you didn't come to hear from my experience. It's not about my life. It's about what the Word of God has to say for all of our lives. But... How many of you know God speaks to us in situations in life? And so God was speaking to me through this experience of just picking raspberries about principles of working for a greater harvest. That if we can do these things in our lives, then we can see greater fruitfulness in our lives. Anybody want to be fruitful? Anybody want to be blessed? Anybody say, you know what, I, I want to see a greater harvest. If we can do these things, then I believe that we will have a greater harvest in each and every one of our lives. First one is this, is don't be afraid of hard work or of pain. Oftentimes we let fear hold us back, like my little nephew. You know, we could have allowed fear to hold us back from a, a great experience that he, he was able to partake of. We could have allowed fear of a bee. We could have allowed fear of a, 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 a prick on, on the finger. You know, even my, my little guy that you saw that was up there, you know, he, he's been known for being the baby. And, and, and he's been known that anytime something's hard, anytime there's pain involved, he's going to cry. He's going to do the baby thing, you know, and play that card. And, and mommy hold me and daddy, you know, talk baby talk to us and melt our hearts and all that kind of stuff. And big, big blue eyes, you know. And, and, and so he's been known for that. But you know what? That kid, he kept getting stuck. He kept getting hurt. He kept going. But he was more interested in the harvest than he was in his personal comfort. And staying away from pain. See, we often allow pain or we allow, allow fearful things to hold us back from the job that God has called us to do. In, in fact, when it comes to hard work, a lot of people can relate to the two guys who were walking past the store and they had a sign in the window that said, no help wanted. And one guy looked at the other and said, you should apply, you'd be great. One of my favorite quotes is from Thomas Edison that we often miss opportunities because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. See, in our society, we want everything instant. We want instant downloads, right? Instant soup. We want our meal in 30 seconds or less where it's free. We want to we wanna push a button on an app and it gets delivered to our door next day or same day. I mean, we have been so conditioned to be lazy. Is that right? 
I, I mean, we were just doing school shopping the other day, and, and, and I praise the Lord for, you know, these, these online shopping things that deliver it to you. But, I mean, we, we had spent a day at the store, and it wiped us out. Why? Because we were conditioned. We've been conditioned. We've been spoiled. Because we push a button for what we want, and it shows up on the front door. And so just things like going to the store and shopping for clothes for our kids, we were like, I don't even want to do it. Can't we just, like, push a button? Where's the, where's the stuff, you know? But when it comes to the things of God, if you're going to have a harvest... Come on, somebody. If we're going to reach the results that God has for us, we can't be afraid of hard work. We've got to roll up our sleeves and we've got to get to the task that God has called us to do. If you want to have fruit in your life, sometimes what's holding us back from fruit is that we don't want to work. And it's just the honest truth. Because we don't want to put in the effort to stay away from sin. Because we don't want to put in the effort to build relationship. Because we don't want to put in the effort to witness. And then on top of that, you got the bees, right? The bees, the things that are painful in life, rejection, hurt, the assault of the enemy. But you guys remember when God was bringing the children of Israel in the promised land, the two things he said the land flowed with? What were they? Milk and honey, right? Milk comes from what? Cows, goats, right? Find milk from a couple different animals. Honey comes from what? Bees. Now, in order to have milk come from cows... It's going to take a lot of work, right? Cows don't milk themselves, guys. That seems like a simple concept, and yet a land flowing with milk and honey means there's a lot of cows, and how many of you know what else comes with a lot of cows? A lot of manure, right? But what comes with honey? Bees. So if you want to get to the milk, there's work. If you want to get to the honey, there's bees. There's going to be opposition. There's going to be things that scare you. There's going to be things that hurt. There's going to be rejection, things that sting, and they, they smart, and they stay a while afterwards. There's going to be pains that you go through as a Christian, and that's just a part of the process. But listen, without hard work and without bees, there would be no harvest. Without the bees to pollinate the flowers, we wouldn't have been able to pick raspberries. And so we need both. Turn with me to Proverbs, the 14th chapter. Proverbs, the 14th chapter, verse number four. And while you're turning there, let me just let you know, some of the verses I'm going to read tonight are going to be in the New Living Translation, because I like the way that it said uh, what we're going to. Um, newer translation kind of breaks it down in our, in our modern English. Most of the time when, when we study the Word of God, we Study from the old King James, but we preach from the new King James. a little easier to understand, but I, tonight I just thought some of the new translations said it well. Proverbs 14.4 in the New Living Translation says this, Without oxen, a stable stays clean. But you need a strong ox for a large harvest. Everybody say large harvest. We want a large harvest, right? Then you're going to need a strong ox. How are you going to get a strong ox? You're going to feed it. What happens when you feed an ox a lot of stuff? I'm talking about poop. That's right. A lot of poop. Right? So without oxen, a stable stays clean. If you don't want to deal with poop, you don't have to. You can have no harvest. You can have no blessing. You can have no increase. But in order to get to the increase, you have to deal with a dirty stable. You're going to have to get out the shovel. You're going to have to deal with the messes. You're going to have to deal with the poop. Right? And then you can have a large harvest, but it's going to take work and it's going to take pain. Is anybody listening tonight? Second thing is this, working for a greater harvest. Second thing that I learned in our experience is this, is that going over the same place twice is not a burden, it's a blessing, okay? Now, I have to qualify this statement because sometimes we think about this in terms of what we mess up, that we, I've been around that mountain, here we go around the mountain another time, and oftentimes when we're preaching the Bible, we're talking about don't, you don't want to go over the same thing again and again, Right? But you know what? When it comes to fruitfulness, when it comes to good things, going over the same thing twice is not a burden, it's a blessing. If you're, if you're going over the same thing again and again because you're in sin, then stop it. Stop sinning. Get Repent. Get right with God. Start learning how to get over that thing, okay? You don't need to be going over that same thing over and over again, okay? So with, with the, the, the weights and the sins, yeah, you don't want to go over the same thing twice. But when it comes to harvest... When it comes to good things, when it comes to blessing, even though it's work, even though you've already been down that road, guess what? Go down it again. There might be some more fruit on that vine. There was often times where my kids would go past a section, then I'd come behind them and I'd say, you guys missed all this fruit. Look at all this, right? 
And then there was times where I was trying to catch up to, to one of the kids, making sure I stay close to them in the big field, making sure that if something happened, I could be right there for them. And so I would pass over a spot just picking real fast, but then one of the kids would come back behind me and say, Dad, look at you passed up the mother load right here. And they'd start picking there. See, going over the same place twice is not a burden. It is a blessing. Let me show this to you in the Word of God, again, in the New Living Translation, but I would encourage you to turn there in your Bible, Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5 this time. The disciples are having their first encounters with Jesus. Jesus has used their boats. He's been teaching. And uh, he's, he's, he's there in their boats. The disciples have finished fishing for the night. They, they've started washing their nets. They're, they're just kind of done for the day. And so in Luke chapter number 5, something interesting happens. Jesus wraps up his teaching and something takes place. Luke chapter 5, verse number 4, and I'm going to read through verse number 7 in the New Living Translation. It says, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. The, the, the New King James says, launch out in the deep for a catch, right? So he's saying, let down your nets to catch some fish, all right? Go out where it's deeper, let down your nets to catch some fish. How many of you say harvest, right? Right? This is, he's, he's looking for a harvest of fish. So he says, we're going to go deeper. Let down your nets for a harvest of fish. Everybody say harvest. harvest. There you go. Verse 5. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. We've been over that place before, Jesus. I've read that chapter in the Bible. I've witnessed to that guy. I have been down that row before, and I haven't found any fruit. I haven't found any fish. But what is Jesus? Look at, look at the rest of the verse. It says, but if you say so, I'll let down the nets again. Everybody say again. See, we're talking about going over the same thing twice is not a burden. It is a blessing, right? The New King James, once again, at your word. I love that. At your word, Jesus. See, the moment God speaks something to you, God may say, no, go over that again. That's your word. Even though I've been over that, even though I've been down that road, even though I've witnessed to that guy, Lord, at your word. See, faith comes by hearing. When you believe God enough to do the work, and then when you hear the word of God come to you, go do it again. Go after it again. Go witness again. Go tell them again. They know it already, but they need to hear it again. You know it already, but you need to hear it again. At your word, Lord, I'll do it. Verse 6, and this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. Verse 7, a shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. Now, if you were to ask the disciples, would you like so many fish caught in your nets that it sank both of your boats? They would say, oh, oh yeah, money, right? Sure, I would want that many fish. So here Jesus says, do it again. I don't want to do it again. I've been doing it all night and haven't caught a thing. But if they would have known the harvest that would have come, they would have said, hey, not just these nets, but let's go get some other nets. Not just these boats, let's go get some other boats. See, they would have given even more attention to what was about ready to take place. Jesus was getting their attention. He's getting ours today. Going over the same thing twice is not a burden. It is a blessing when it comes to the harvest. See, sometimes there's fruit where we missed it the first time around. You might have passed over something the first time. You might have been going quick. You might have been doing business. Maybe you found something there the first time, and you thought that's all that was there. But God is saying, hey, there's some more meat on that bone. Hello. You ever read the same scripture more than once and got something new out of it when you read it again? Can I tell you something? I've been reading the Bible for 20 years, 21 years now, 21 years straight through every year of my life, not just once, multiple times. I don't even know how many times I've gone through the Bible. I'm not saying that to impress you because that's not impressive, all right? Anybody can do that. But here's what, what is, is neat about this thing, is that as I go through the Bible, after 21 years, you would think that I would have a good grasp for this, wouldn't you? I'll read the Bible. I say, Lord, when did you add that scripture? I never read this one before. God, I didn't realize you said that. God, really? See, there's more to it than we even know. And going over the same thing twice is not a burden. It is a blessing. Are you guys getting it yet? 
How about this? Sometimes there's new fruit in a new day in the same place. Come on. I witnessed in my block. Oh, there might be some new fruit in a new day, but the same place. I witnessed on the job. Yeah, you did that once. Time to do it again. Time to refresh. Time to go after it. Uh, I've been on the outreaches. Hey, maybe it's time to go back on the outreaches. Maybe it's time to stir yourself up. Some of you guys come to church once a week. Hey, yeah, yeah I've been to church. I've been doing that. I'm just doing my thing. I've I got a great relationship with God. Yeah, sure. But maybe there's some new fruit on a new day, but the same place. See, we let things get to us because life is changing so fast all around us. Technology changing. Uh, the times are changing. People are changing. Everything's changing around us. And so we get kind of bored with things that are the same place, same thing, same way, same this, same that, Right? That's why we got to mix up things every now and then just to make sure that, you know, that's why we have different pictures and different colors and different stuff like that is to keep people engaged. Different speakers even that come through is so that we can keep the hearts and the minds of people engaged. Why? Because we get bored. We are easily distracted by new things. You ever wonder why car manufacturers every three years come out with a new body style? Because we're distracted. Oh, I've got to have the new one. I gotta have the new one. No. See, God is saying going over the same thing twice is not a burden. It is a blessing. And therefore, check back in those spots. Maybe there's some fruit left on that vine. Maybe there's some fruit that's left. Maybe there's something that you need to do. Maybe there's something that you need to say. Maybe there's a place where you can receive the harvest. That's why they give the plants time to rest. I, I found out from this, this company, because my day's off for Monday, Tuesday, and the kids have been out of school, so I wanted to go up there on a Monday or Tuesday. It's my day off. Kids are out of school. You know, let's go up there. So I called them up and said, hey, are you guys open today? They said, no. We're closed on Mondays and Tuesdays. I said, are you kidding me? So we had to go up there on a Saturday after church, you know, but why did they do that? Because they said, we've been picked over so much during the week, we've got to give the plants time to rest so that they can grow new fruit. See, so I could have went down there on a Saturday, on a Sunday, picked all the fruit off of every plant, and two days later, guess what? There's new fruit in the same place. Some of you guys need to go back to those places where you've picked already. Done the work, gone through the pain, gone through the process, but you're going to find new fruit in a new day in the same place. Can somebody say amen to that? That's a good word. Here's one I like this one. Number three is this. Number three is this. Working for a greater harvest. Give attention to what's important. Now, we, we would think that goes without saying, Pastor. Why would you say give attention to what's important? Do you know that oftentimes it's the simple, basic things that escape us? But it's the simple, basic things that are often mo most important. A anybody work construction or work with heavy machinery, work with mechanical things, okay? It's the simple things that make the most difference, isn't it? Like, tuck in your shirt. Why do I gotta tuck in my shirt? Because if you don't, it might get caught in the machinery and suck you in and you'll die, right? That's a simple thing. But if you don't tuck in that shirt when you're working with that piece of equipment, you could die. So give attention to what's important. Safety is important. I remember working at Walmart's Tire and Lube Express Center. I was in the pit, and it literally was a pit that I was in underneath the cars. They would roll the cars in overhead, and I was the guy downstairs, and I would pop the little nut off the bottom, let all the oil drain out, put the nut back in, tell them they can fill it up with oil, that sort of a thing, and that was my job. I would lube the undercarriage, you know, and do that sort of a thing. You know what was important to me? Wear your safety goggles. You know why? Because if you didn't, and you popped that little nut off, and it dropped down in that hot oil, and that oil splashed up in your eye... That's not a fun experience because I had goggles that had uh, air vents on the tops and it splashed down and got in my eye and I spent a good 10 to 20 minutes at the eye wash like this. That is not fun, my friends. See, it's the simple things that often escape us and we overlook them. Anybody play golf or like sports or anything like that? Golf, it's all right here, right? Your stance. You go back and then you come through and you got to turn your hands over and follow through with your swing. It's so simple, but what are we going to do? We're going to get up there and kill it and we end up doing a baseball swing and we hit it way off into somebody's house and then we have to run so that they don't come and catch us. <laughs> when we were picking raspberries, you have your raspberry basket, right? What's the simplest way to keep raspberries in the basket? Don't tip it, right? So what happens when you see fruit down low? 
So pay attention to what's important. I can't tell you how many times I had to tell the kids, hey, when you bend down to pick up rats, don't tip the basket over. Super simple, but super important because if you want to keep raspberries in a basket, gravity will do that for you as long as you don't tip the basket over and change gravity on the basket, right? For all of us, we need to pay attention to what's important, our spiritual disciplines. We need to make sure. Listen, slow down if you have to, okay? Things get dropped when we try to rush. Remember, we try to make everybody, you know, especially men, we try to make everything a competition, right? So I can't have my wife, Jessica, filling up a basket faster than I do. So what am I doing? Right, getting as much as I can. I got one hand in the basket, so I'm just as fast as I can. But what else is happening while I'm going fast? Everything's falling all over the ground, and I'm not getting the fruit that I need. See, if we're going to work for a greater harvest, we need to make sure that we're not just doing the job, but we're doing the job the right way. Mark chapter 4, you're there in Luke. Turn back to Mark chapter 4 this time. Jesus is speaking to the disciples, and he's talking in terms like we're talking about tonight. He's talking about seeds. He's talking about harvest. He's talking about growth. He's talking about different things. He's using parables to teach the people. And right smack dab in the middle of a bunch of parables, talking about seeds and harvest and growth and all that kind of a thing, he starts to explain what it's all about. He starts to tell them that the seed is the word, that the word is sown, that the word grows in the heart, the hearts are different kinds of soils, all that kind of a thing. And he tells several other parables that are seed parables that talk about the same thing. Right in the middle of all of this, he stops and he makes a statement that I believe speaks to what we're talking about tonight. Mark chapter 4 and verse number 24. Jesus is speaking, then he said to them, take heed what you hear. Everybody say, take heed. Some of your translations might say, be careful how you hear, right? With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. Everybody say more. We're talking about a greater harvest, right? So he says, pay attention to what is important because what's important is that you hear the word of God because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word, okay? So be careful how you hear. Are you hearing it with a good heart of understanding? Because if you're not, you're gonna be unfruitful. Are you hearing it with a heart that is uh, distracted with the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things? Because if you are, that word is gonna get choked. Are you hearing with persecution in mind? Are you fearful of the heat of the day that's going to come and that's going to shrink that plant? And are you hearing with vulnerability to the devil like wayside ground, stony ground, where the devil will come and steal that word out of your heart? See, we have to be careful how we hear. Give attention to what is important because with the measure you use, with the amount of interest and attention you put in to what is important, it will be measured back to you and to him who hears more will be given. That means there is increase. You will have a greater harvest. Can you say amen to that? See, look at things from a different perspective. What perspective is that, Pastor? God's perspective. When you get the word of God in your life and you start to get the God vision, you start to get the God perspective on life, you start to realize how God wants you to do life, how God wants you to do marriage, how God wants you to be a single person, how God wants you to do purity, how God wants you to do finances, how God wants you to do parenting, how God wants you to do business. See, when you get a hold of the God perspective, it changes things. There may be something there that we didn't see before, and if we're not paying attention to what's important, we're going to tip the basket over, and we won't receive the harvest that God had intended for each and every one of us. Last one is this, and I like this one. This is a good one. We is better than me. Somebody ought to say a great big amen to that. We is better than me. When you're working at something, you shouldn't be working at it alone. Listen, God has not called us to do life alone. Yes, we will stand individually before the Father and give an account of our life here in the flesh, whether good or evil, whatever we've done, we're going to talk to God about it by ourselves. No one else is responsible for your actions but you, okay? But when it comes to the work that we do for the harvest, we is better than me. See, our kids would not have filled the baskets as fast or as full as they did if it wasn't for mom and dad. Okay? I'm just saying. Mom and dad are kind of cool when it comes to raspberry picking. We could school you. But mom and dad would not have had the fun that we have without the kids. We was better than me. If I would have got out there, I would have said, man, what am I doing out here? 
I could just go to Trader Joe's and pick up a basket of raspberries if I want them, you know? But with the kids, man, I'm out there taking pictures and, you know, we're having a good time. We're doing videos and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it was great. We had a blast. I saw my nephew for the first time overcome his fear of bees and jump in there and have a good time. And he tried his first raspberry, praise the Lord, you know, and liked it. Hallelujah. That blessed my heart. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's great to think that when I was a kid, my parents took me up to, up to Oakland, and I've got memories of Parrish Ranch and all the different places up there. I could even tell you about uh, Miss Kitty, who was up in one of the stores up there. Some of you guys might remember Miss Kitty, right, in one of the stores. And so I'm telling my kids, driving up there about Miss Kitty and how we used to go up to the ranch and the zoo that's been there since I was a little kid. And so now I'm taking my kids, and I'm thinking about, man, down the road, they're going to be telling their kids about these experiences about raspberry picking every year. See, we is better than me. God has called us to do life together. God has called us to get into relationship, godly relationships. And when you start to go for the harvest together, it's way better than if you're alone. Well, look at the word once again. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse number 9. Ecclesiastes, right after the Proverbs, you'll find Ecclesiastes. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse number 9, in the New King James says this, Two are better than one. Everybody say better. Yeah. We like better, don't we? Yeah. Yes, amen, we do at this church especially. I don't know about those other churches, but this church we like better. Why? Because they have a good reward for their labor. Everybody say reward. We like rewards, don't we? Even the other churches like rewards. Okay? If they say they don't, they lie in. But two are better than one. Why? Because they get a good reward for their labor. Yeah, it's work. But when you're working together, man, I tell you, the hours can pass like minutes. You're talking, you're chopping it up. When you're seeing you're effective and you're fruitful, all of a sudden, life just gets better. See, others see things we don't oftentimes. There could be a time where you're, you're working at the harvest and somebody says, hey, turn that leaf over. There's fruit under there. Hey, look to your right side. Look over there. See, when you do life together, it changes the way things work. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse number 9 through 12 in the New Living Translation. I thought this was kind of fun. In the New Living Translation, it says, Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. We like to succeed. Verse 10, if one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But if someone who falls alone is in real, uh, or but someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Verse 11, likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm, but how can one be warm alone? Verse 12, a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. I like that. Man, when you know someone's got your back, all of a sudden you can fight harder. Because why? You know they've got your back. They've got it covered. And then I like what the last part of this says. It says three are even better. Everybody say better. Three are even better. So, see, God is saying, yes, two is great, but three is better, right? So, so why not bring someone along with you doing life? Why not take someone along with you? Hey, I'm going to go witness on, on uh, Redlands Market Night. Come with me. Come on, join the crew. We're going to go down there. Hey, we're going to volunteer at the Women Rock Conference. Why don't you join us? Why don't you help us out? Hey, you know what? We heard that there's an outreach going on, and we're going to go down there and support it. We're, we're going to volunteer. We're going to, just going to see what's going on, or we're going to pray beforehand. Why don't you come with us? See, three's even better. But look at what it says. For a triple braided cord is not easily broken. In life, there's always a third party. There's you. There's others, and there's God. And when you and others get together, whether it's in marriage, I always teach married couples this when I, when I do my, my premarital spiritual guidance. I tell them the two of you with God wrapped around your life and in and through your life is a three-quarter strand that's not easily broken. And it's the same thing in life. In our relationships, in our friendships, in our work endeavors, in our ministries, if you bring others along, the two of you, you and others, However many that may be, with God in the center of it and wrapped around it, that is a three-chord strand that is not easily broken. I thought to close tonight I'd read you a story about a man who was trying to do the job alone just to drive the point home. He wrote to an insurance agent about something that took place. And here's what the letter said. Dear sir, I'm writing in response to your request for additional information for my insurance claim. In block number three of the accident claim form, I wrote trying to do the job alone as the cause of my accident. You said in your letter that I should explain that statement more fully. I trust the following details will be sufficient. I'm a bricklayer by trade. On the date of the accident, I was working alone on the roof of 
a new six-story building when I completed my work. I discovered that I had about 500 pounds of brick left over. Rather than carrying the bricks down by hand, I decided to lower them in a barrel by using a pulley, which was attached to the side of the building at the sixth floor level. Securing the rope at ground level, I went up to the roof, swung the barrel out, and loaded the bricks into it. Then I went back to the ground level and untied the rope, holding it tightly to ensure a slow descent of the 500 pounds of bricks. You will note in block number 22 of the claim form that my weight is 150 pounds. Due to my surprise of being jerked off the ground so suddenly I lost my presence of mind and forgot to let go of the rope, needless to say I proceeded up the side of the building at a very rapid rate of speed. In the vicinity of the third floor I met the barrel coming down. This explains my fractured skull and collarbone slow, slowed and only slightly I continued my rapid ascent, not stopping until the fingers of my right hand were two knuckles deep into the pulley. By this time I had regained my presence of mind and was able to hold tightly to the rope in spite of my pain. At approximately the same time, however, the barrel of bricks hit the ground and the bottom fell out of the barrel. Devoid of the weight of the bricks, the barrel then weighed approximately 50 pounds. I refer you again to the information in block number 11 regarding my weight. As you might imagine, I began a rapid descent down the side of the building and in the vicinity of the third floor, I met the barrel again coming up. This accounts for the two fractured ankles and the lacerations of my legs and lower body. This second encounter with the barrel slowed me enough to lessen my injuries when I fell onto the pile of bricks, and fortunately, only three vertebrae were cracked. I'm sorry to report, however, that as I lay there on the bricks in pain, unable to stand, and watching the empty barrel six stories above me, I again lost my presence of mind and let go of the rope. The empty barrel weighed more than the rope, so it came down upon me and broke both of my legs. I hope I have furnished information sufficient to explain why trying to do the job alone was stated the cause of the accident. Sincerely, a bricklayer. Guys, two is better than one. But guess what? Three is even better. That's you, others, and God. What did we learn tonight? We learned about how to work for a greater harvest, right? We learned about this. Tonight we learned that we shouldn't be afraid of hard work. We shouldn't be afraid of pain. We learned that, second, that going over the same place twice isn't a burden, that it's a blessing. There might be some more fruit where we've already been. Third thing we learned is to give attention to what is important. And finally, we learned that we is better than me. If you got something from the Lord tonight, come on, give God a great big praise in this place.